What is going on, Heat fans? It's your boy, Ernest, here, and I am back with a Miami Heat Talk video. Before we get started, you guys, take a moment, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, you guys. We are almost at that 1,200 mark. I want to get the 2,000 subscribers by the end of uh, the summer, and I need your guys' help to do that. But in order to get that done, you guys, I got to be posting this content. So off we go on another Miami Heat Talk adventure. Now, guys, I know I'm, I'm normally on here with uh, Miami Heat gear, but from time to time, you'll see stuff a little bit different. I am a pro wrestler, and I got a bunch of these. Got that Shawn Michaels HBK t-shirt for y'all. I'll be throwing uh, some of these here and there for you guys to see. Comment on it, let me know what you think. Um, and I know this video is a little different, you guys. The last video I posted, that sound quality was terrible. Um, I didn't notice it until after I posted the video. I do apologize for the inconvenience. There was some clicking sound and um, it sounded distorted. So let's go with old school, bring this microphone back, get everything sounding clearly because you guys need to hear and understand all of this. Now, um, first thing I wanna talk about you guys was yesterday's summer league game. The Miami Heat took on the Sacramento Kings. Um, wasn't as good as our first game. We lost 95 to 83, but there were a lot of good things to look at in this game. When I watch summer league, you guys, I don't really care about wins and losses. I don't really care about that summer league championship trophy. Would it be nice? Sure. But the Miami Heat have one goal. One goal. And that is to put another year on the championship banner. Not for summer league, for the NBA. So... You guys can go ahead and take that Summer League Championship trophy. We'll take the real one. What we're looking for is for guys on this Summer League team that can contribute and help us this upcoming season because we don't know what Miami's going to have to give up in this trade package for Damian Lillard. These rumors are getting crazy. These added teams are getting nuts. So you don't know what Miami's going to have to let go. So let's talk about some players that, that I noticed yesterday. Now, first and foremost... You got to give credit where credit's due. Nikola Jovic, Nico, dude comes out again with another 20-point outing. 22 points in 26 minutes, 6 for 13 from the field. He hits three three-point shots, and he also gets you three rebounds, an assist, and a steal. Nico is showing that he is ready for NBA action. You know, he was most likely ready last year, you guys. You saw a lot of these games where he was having big offensive plays, but his body wasn't right. Miami knew they had to get him in NBA shape. He gains 20 pounds in muscle, and he's playing in the post. He, he's expanding his game. You see a little bit of the joker in him, Nikola Jokic. You see the fact that he can score, he can pass, he can rebound. Not as good as the joker, but it's going to take some time. He's definitely a work in progress, but he's someone that can help you win now. I love Nikola Jovic. I love watching him play in summer league. Another 20 point outing is incredible. Now, you don't get big games from a lot of other guys I feel that should have stepped up. Um, Jaime Jaquez, he only gives you four points, one of six shooting, but he only plays 16 minutes. I think Karan Butler was trying to give opportunities for other guys because like I said, we don't give a shit about this summer league championship. It's about who can help us during the season. So you're going to see different lineups from Karan Butler because we need to see who can possibly be ready for summer camp, uh, for training camp, and for the season. So not a good game from Jaime Jaquez. Disappointing game from Orlando Robinson. He goes two for six, seven points, misses a three-point shot. Um, he gets you five rebounds. He gets you three steals. So that's definitely something to look at. Look, Thomas Bryant took the backup center spot. We know this. But here's the thing that you guys have seen with Miami Heat seasons. There's always injuries. There's always players that are going to be missing time because of how hard this team plays. So having an Orlando Robinson as your third center is a great thing to have. I, I, I love it. So even though he had a bad game, I, I, I still see a lot of upside in Orlando Robinson. Now, some players that I want to talk about that are that are having some great summer league outings. First and foremost, um, let's talk about my man, Jamari Bouye. Bouye has been incredible in this summer league. You look at his stats and you say, Ernest, you know, he, only got some, he only gave you nine points. He gave you four assists. He did give you a whopping three steals in 17 minutes. 
This kid has a speed unlike anybody I've seen in the NBA Summer League. He get, he, and his defensive prowess, the way that he's a pest on the ball, this kid reminds me of Gabe Vincent so much, but faster. Now, his offensive game is not where Gabe Vincent's uh, game is. Miami's going to have to develop Bouye's offense, but he can score. But the thing that I love about Bouye, you guys, he's one of those guys that you can leave in the end of the roster. And like I mentioned about Robinson, when players get hurt, if we decide to keep Kyle Lowry, if we have to, you know Kyle's not going to play a lot in the season. So you need guys that are going to step up and they're going to contribute. Orlando Robinson, Jamari Bouye, these are guys that can really contribute. And there's another guy who is a pest out there on the floor, Jamal Kane. Oh my God. We saw big, big games from Jamal Kane last season in the summer league, but also during the regular season. There was games that he was giving you 15 points, 18 points against NBA teams. He doesn't play the first game because of an ankle injury. But then he comes out with the second game. He gives you 17 points in 24 minutes, 7 for 10 shooting. And he's just dunking on everyone. This kid's got a vertical that's incredible. He's a guy that can fill in spots when Jimmy Butler takes his one of his 15 to 20 games off. When Caleb Martin is starting, you have a wing in Jamal King who can come off the bench and do some damage. These three guys, Jamal King, Orlando Robinson, Jamari Bouye, these are three guys to keep your eye on because these three guys scream Miami Heat culture, and these are guys that can contribute right away. But it's not just them, you guys. There were other players that I was seeing that, that looked good. Um, TCZ and uh, Brian McKenna. Two, day, uh, two videos ago, they were talking about Chase Aldridge. Chase Aldridge is a guy that was undrafted. He did not uh, He did not go in for his final year. He decided to go to the NBA. He doesn't get drafted. He's in this Miami Heat summer league. But he showed a great outing against the Lakers. He didn't really play much yesterday. He only had 11 minutes, didn't score, but his defensive prowess is great. He's a guy to keep your eye on. Now, look, he went 0 for 4 for the field. So he is, a, he is a project, but it's a guy to keep your eye on in summer league. And then another guy that played, a guy that didn't play in game one, Patrick Gardner. This is a guy that I've been talking about since I posted the undrafted video. Six foot 11, 245 pounds, 39% from the free, uh, from the three point line in college. Yesterday, he plays 15 minutes, goes two for three, hits a three pointer, six points, four rebounds. Nothing too crazy. But when you have a 6'11 player who can hit threes, that's definitely someone to keep your eye on because that's the way this NBA is going. And when you look at him out there, he's a big body. He's a big body. So this is definitely a guy you can develop. You can have him on a possible two-way contract if you if because Orlando Robinson was turned into a standard contract. So remember, we have three two-way contracts that we can give up. Now, one thing I didn't mention about Bouye earlier, you guys, he did um, hurt his ankle yesterday in the summer league. Um, as we know, speed is all precedented by your feet, so you need them to continue the speed. Uh, it's not a really big deal, but it is something to keep our, our eye on. Um, a couple other guys didn't really have a big standout, but these are players that I'm definitely keeping my eye on. Drew Smith, I talked about him not too long ago, you guys. This is a guy, another dude, screams Miami Heat culture. He can pass, he can rebound, he can score. Um, he only gives you nine points, but he gives you three steals, two assists. He's a great defensive player. Drew Smith and Jamari Bouye, these are point guards that we can look at as a possible Gabe Vincent tutelage. Who could be the next Gabe Vincent? You have Jamari Bouye and Drew Smith. We've seen Miami Heat turn undrafted players into starters, as we've seen. So these are guys to keep your eye on. Now look, another dude that I really like, Chase Daniels, he didn't play. Um... So that's a bummer right there. Uh, Drew Peterson starts again. Drew Peterson was an undrafted player. He's showing the Miami Heat that he could be trusted on a starting level. It's like I said, you guys, in this summer league, it's all about who can help us now. We don't care about that trophy. We care about who can help us now. Jamal Cain, Orlando Robinson, Jamari Bouye, Drew Smith. These are four guys we need to keep our eye on. Now, why am I mentioning all this, you guys? Why am I talking about Chase Audage? Why am I talking about Caleb Daniels? Why am I talking about Patrick Gardner? 
We don't know what this trade for Damian Lillard is going to be. Now, we but there is one thing that we do know. That wherever, if Damian Lillard is going to be traded, he will be packaged with Yusin Nurkic, the center for the Portland Trail Blazers. Got his name right this time. <laughs> Anyways, so Nurkic and Lillard coming to the Miami Heat, that's going to give us a big, big starting lineup. That's going to give us a great starting lineup. You could possibly have Nurkic with Bam. Now we can move Bam to the number four, his true position that everyone has wanted him in. We can maybe do that. You have Jimmy Butler, Damian Lillard. If we keep Duggan Robinson, you can start him. But if we get rid of him, you can plug Josh Richardson in the starting two. All right? So those are five guys right there. Look at that starting lineup. That, that to me is probably the best starting lineup in the NBA. And then you also have Caleb Martin coming off the bench if he's not traded. You see, Throwing names out here, you guys, Caleb Martin, Duncan Robinson, it's tough because we don't know who's going to be added into this package. From what we've seen, you guys, it's been seven, it's been five days since Dam five or six days since Damian Lillard requested this trade, and the longer that it takes, I think this it's not worse for Miami because Damian Lillard has said multiple times, you guys, he wants to come to the Heat. He wants to come specifically to the Heat. It's not like he has a no trade clause, but he wants to come here. Other teams are going to try to come and they're going to try to give their offers, but I don't think it's going to work. And for you Boston fans that are in my comments, good Lord, Boston just always tries to rain on the Miami Heat's parade. Always. I'm going to shut you Boston fans up right now, okay? For those Boston fans that think they're going to trade for Damian Lillard, you're smoking crack. The only way that Boston gets Damian Lillard is if they trade Jalen Brown. That ain't happening. That ain't happening, you guys. Damian Lillard is 33 years old. The reason why he works for the Miami Heat is because you're putting him with these veteran dogs like Jimmy Butler and Kevin Love and Miami Heat's in win-now mode. If the Boston Celtics trade for Damian Lillard, a guy who doesn't want to be there, first and foremost, you put him on a team with Jason Tatum and um, Christoph Porzingis, that doesn't work. That do, I, I don't see that system working. Damian Lillard and Jason Tatum are going to want the ball in their hands at all times. That's the problem with Jalen uh, with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. They're having this issue about who's going to be the guy. It's going to be the same thing if Damian Lillard comes in that team. And here's another reason why Damian Lillard works for the Miami Heat. Everybody keeps throwing this word big three. Damian Lillard, Jimmy Butler, and Bam Adebayo. That's not a big three. I don't give a shit who says it is. It's not. The NBA media, everybody just throws shit on the Miami Heat talking about how we don't have any stars. And now that if we trade for Damian Lillard, all of a sudden we're a big three? Guys, if Damian Lillard comes on this team, this is similar to a big three, San Antonio's big three. Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, and Tim Duncan. That's how you can refer it. The games aren't similar, but there's no selfishness in the Miami Heat. If Damian Lillard gets traded to the Miami Heat with Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo, they will take a step back and allow Damian Lillard to be the guy. That's actually how Bam Adebayo and Jimmy Butler love it. They're defense first guys. Damian's a scorer. Damian is a killer. Damian is that guy that the Miami Heat can go to and say, we need a bucket, go get it. And now Jimmy Butler is not going to have to throw away his life to try to score a basket. If Miami trade for Damian Lillard, you guys, this is going to be unbelievably great for Jimmy Butler because now this is going to add years to his career. It's kind of like when LeBron James came to the Miami Heat. You saw that 2008, 2009, 2010 Dwayne Wade. He was killing himself. He was taking years off of his career. LeBron James came, it added more time to Wade. But you saw it. Wade was already broken by the end of the big three stint. This is going to help Jimmy Butler prolong his career. This is going to allow us to see that back end of Jimmy Butler's contract. That's why Damian Lillard fits with this Miami Heat team, you guys, because it's a perfect system, a perfect fit. And I'm sorry, Boston fans. Eric Spolstra is a way, 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 
way, way, way, way, way, way, way, way, way better coach than Joe Mazzulla. Facts. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. But I will say this. The Miami Heat do need to make this trade sooner rather than later. It only benefits the Miami Heat. Why? Because you need to know what the hell you have. There are players out there, guys like Bull Bull, um, I, I can't think of any, but there's minimum, minimum contract players out there, guys like Danny Green, a, a bunch of guys that are just waiting to see what happens with Damian Lillard. Because if Damian Lillard gets traded to the Miami Heat, you guys, you're going to see what happened with Josh Richardson and Thomas Bryant with some of these other players. Players that can take 5 to $10 million in the market will take the veteran minimum to come here and win. Thomas Bryant and Josh Richardson took less money to come here for one reason. Boost their value. Boost their value and make more money and to get a ring. You do all that in one season, you can just ride off your career and make as much money as possible. Other players will see that and they will try to do it. So, no real updates from the Damian Lillard front, you guys. Um, this is just all stuff that I'm talking about. The only thing that I was hearing yesterday was that Boston fans were trying to jump on this bandwagon. No, no. But Boston fans, tell me, tell me, be honest with me. Would you give up Jalen Brown for Damian Lillard? Because a trade cannot happen, you guys, for Boston keeping Tatum, Brown, and Porzingis on that team. It's not going to happen. Portland will not do that. The only way that Boston can steal this trade from Miami is if they throw in Jalen Brown. And that's something I wanted to mention too, you guys. That's the reason why the Miami Heat need to make this trade happen sooner rather than later. Because another team can just swoop in and take Damian Lillard from us. And if that happens, I'm going to lose my shit. Because he has specifically requested to come here. You make it happen. I don't care if you have to take three, four, five teams. The good news is... There's about three to five teams that are interested in doing a multi-team trade for Miami. Just to reiterate, you guys, I mentioned this yesterday, but Tyler Hero is the reason why this trade hasn't happened. Portland don't want him. Not that, not because he sucks or anything, because they don't need him. So Miami need to, need to find a third team to send Tyler Hero. And to just give you guys an example, Brooklyn is that team. And just to make this really easy for you guys, Brooklyn is that team. Brooklyn has told Miami they would take Tyler Hero. But the problem why the trade hasn't happened is because Brooklyn wants Portland or Miami to take Ben Simmons. Neither team wants to do that. So they're trying to find a fourth and a fifth team so Ben Simmons can go somewhere. And then that team that's taking Ben, ben Simmons can be incentivized some way. So Miami Heat, you guys, may have to give up people like Tyler Hero, Kyle Lowry's expiring contract, Duncan Robinson as a filler, and you may have to throw in Jovic, Hawkes, both of them are either or, and then, you know, you got Haywood Highsmith, you got, few, uh, you got future assets and draft picks, and then obviously draft picks are going to be, need to be taken from other teams sent to Portland. So I hope that makes this a little bit easy, you guys. That's the reason why this trade hasn't happened. Uh, Miami's really trying to make it work. Portland's being a little bit stingy. I don't hate on that. I understand. Portland's losing Damian Lillard. They want to get the best best incentive piece back. Look at what Utah did. Look at what Utah did with Minnesota trading Rudy Gobert. Utah got all those draft picks. The problem is this isn't two years ago. We're under the new collective bargaining agreement. Teams need to make trades that fit those uh, that fit that new CBA. So that's why this is taking some time, you guys. So I want to hear from what you think in the comments. Let me know what you think about the summer league players that I talked about. Is there anybody specific you guys feel that can help us next season win right away? What do you guys think about the Boston comments? Boston fans, are you willing to give up Jalen Brown to get Damian Lillard? Get out of here. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Most importantly, guys, hit the like button, subscribe. Click that notification bell to get all my updates. My views and subscribers have been booming because of you guys. Thank you all so much. I love you guys. And until next time, your boy Ernest out. That's enough said. Let's go, Heat.